the hell you doing, Brainiacs? Long Allen Ice Tea here. On the road to grab me some tables, ladders, and chairs. Ready to talk pro reps with you. Because it's TLC 2018. Later tonight, as of this live, on tape edition of Brain Buster Radio. And you have, I mean, just the greatest group of pro wrestling talkers here to hype up the big end of the year pay-per-view for the WWE today. We've got Dr. Calsonis on the unos and doses. He's taking our pulse. He's making sure we're all healthy to put our bodies on the line tonight. We've got Jumpin' Jacob Jacob. We've got Moose the Mark on the internet gimmicks. Not here complaining, obviously. Finn Man on limited dates. And the Sultan of social media, a man called Wired, seeing that you were tweeting hashtag tables, ladders, and chairs. Or maybe just one. Maybe you're a fan of just one of the various objects being used tonight. I don't know. All I know is that there is a big announcement for tomorrow night as well. Monday Night Raw is going to, well, get turned up a notch because a very special guest is going to be there. And I'm pretty sure that's what's causing all this, Triple J. Absolutely, Long Allen. That is what's causing all this. You know, you're off to your local hardware store, you know, to pick up some tables, ladders, and chairs. And I, I hope some stairs. Also, uh, I, I, I'm going to see if they have any steel stairs. Nobody's, they, nobody's ever talking about stairs anymore. But I'm only buying really two. Important. If they have them, I'm only getting two. Okay, that's that's fair. Uh, I also have a man called Wired with me. Uh, now, Wired, you're all over the Instagram juniors, you know, the Twitters, the Snapchats. And we were told just, you know, just a couple days ago that Mr. McMahon returns to Monday Night Raw to shake things up. Is this going to be a full draft? Have you heard anything? Are people losing their jobs? Are people getting uh, are people getting promoted? What's going on? Will he have a tumbler with him? You know, uh, Triple J was it was hilarious because I was talking to my friends about how this TLC was probably the biggest pay per view of the year, so other than WrestleMania and probably the Royal Rumble. I mean, it's bigger. It's, it's four Watch, times definitely. bigger. Uh, four times bigger than last year's TLC. I mean, this is. One of the greatest pay per views ever assembled by the WWE, and how do they top it by announcing that Vince McMahon's going to be live on camera, on air, all over Raw? I mean, quote unquote, to shake things up. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, this is, you know, on the eve of, of Baron Corbin possibly being the, the general manager full time. Uh, who knows what Vince McMahon? I'm um, excuse me, Mr. McMahon uh, can actually come on here and, and say. I, I'm pretty sure that Monday Night Raw has got to be starting with uh, all of the wrestlers standing around the ring, right? The entire Raw roster, Triple J, will be standing on the apron, what with Mr. McMahon in the middle. You would think that. I mean, whenever, you know, there a precedent has been set whenever things have been shooken up. That only means one thing. You know, it, it doesn't mean a couple of different things. It, it means, you know, well, I guess you could say it means two things, either the full-blown draft or, uh, you know, trades <laughs> behind the scenes so i don't know how it could be anything different but you know we're close to the end of the wrestlemania calendar year we usually don't do these things this close especially once the road to wrestlemania is, is going to be kicking off so it, it's very peculiar i will say that I, I, well i don't think it has anything to do with the roster if mr mcmahon's showing up that means that whoever's in charge of monday now raw needs to be on their toes so that would be baron corbin general manager elect baron corbin and Stephanie McMahon, I think, would be the ones getting shaken up, right? Wired. That's my that's my thinking of it because that's what Mr. McMahon really oversees. Unless he's just going to pick, you know what? Actually, the new day. I'm putting you on Raw. He's going to come with the new day, and he's going to be dancing, and maybe our truth and Carmella. I don't know. It's going to. This is as unpredictable as TLC. You know, uh, Triple J, you bring up a good point. The, uh, the the fiscal year of WWE is headed into its fourth quarter right after TLC, and, and that's when you make your big push, right? That's when you want to make your big dollars, your big cents, is in the fourth quarter. Um, well, I'm pretty sure we're already in the we're ending the fourth quarter. You mean? No, what? Well, for the fiscal year. For the fiscal for, year. For, fiscal, for the fiscal year. No, WrestleMania is the end of the year. The fiscal uh, year is starts in April for WrestleMania. The, yes. You're, you're killing yeah, it here. Shut, we're ending the calendar year here. Yeah. Is it a fiscal year the same as a calendar year? Business oh terms. God. Jesus. Uh, never mind. Just go ahead. Business. Never mind. Just keep talking. QuickBooks. Excel. Sorry. 
your fiscal year, Long Island, for your information, is whatever you want it to be. And for WWE, its fourth quarter is January through uh, WrestleMania. And, and we're on the heels of that. And you know Vince, and Mr. McMahon's going to come in here and do whatever he If he's unhappy about something, he just comes on on air and, and, and says whatever he wants. A few, a few years ago, right before Survivor Series, uh, he just wanted to shake things up and put the, uh, the control of Raw on the line. For no reason whatsoever other than he wanted something uh, on the line. So who knows what this is this is actually going to be yeah we you know we're going to talk about what all this means for baron corbin because if i was him i you know i would be shaken in my loafers i'll say that much knowing that the real boss is coming to my place of business monday night but we got a full 12 matches on the card this is only supposed to be a four-hour pay-per-view i don't know how the hell they're going to squeeze it all <laughs> oh uh, they'll do it triple j they're going to get it done but Real quick, before we go to all the matches, I do have one quick question. Did you find it out? Everyone's talking about it, that people are trying to equate the fact that the ratings have been low for Monday Night Raw, Mr. McMahon's coming back on Raw, maybe because of that, and also people are saying that they were acknowledging that Monday Night Raw hasn't been very good on Monday Night Raw itself last week. Where do you come out? What are they saying on social media about that wire? I mean, I stay away from the uh, the Reddit gimmicks and the uh, and those complainers. Mostly Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Those are all really positive. Snapchat specifically. Um, but I guess Raw has been uh, you know subpar of, as of late. I'm still enjoying. it. I think there's still some great you know parts to it. I think Renee Young has been a great addition. So I don't know what Mister. You know, if he's unhappy, it doesn't matter what the people think. He's going to make that change. I mean, this I, is re- it's really a case of you know. Uh, I guess real life, or you know, art imitating real life. You had Seth Rollins out there, you know, piece of crap as he is, basically yeah. speaking for the Moose of Moose the Marks of the world. About, Did Moose know, the Mark? I was hoping he'd show up because I was going to ask him if he wrote Seth Rollins' promo on Monday. Night. That did sound very Moose the Mark esque. That was very confusing, and, and and then you got Michael Cole even saying. This show sucks shit for two weeks, and it's all Baron Corbin's fault. I, I don't know. I don't, I, is it all Bar- has Baron Corbin really been? I've seen people in charge do way worse than what Baron Corbin's doing as of late. Although Lucha House Rules does seem pretty unfair. <laughs> uh, yeah, Seth Rollins brought up you know a slew of things that uh, that Baron Corbin had been doing. Uh, Improperly, so I'm sure Mr. McMahon has a list twice as long as Seth Rollins. I mean, we all have a list, probably four times the list as, as Seth Rollins. To be honest with you, now I, the, I like the only thing I change about Monday Night Raw is all that Seth Rollins on my screen. Really, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to ask Doctor Calzonis. You know, he he's not a regular watcher of the product anymore. With the news that Mr. McMahon is going to be there on Monday night to shake things up, Doctor Calzonis, will you have time to uh, peel yourself away from? From, from the patients and try to tune in to see what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, every time Vince McMahon is on the screen, it is a must watch. So I'm going to have to find some time, even if I have to record it on VHS. <laughs> it's a must watch. <laughs> Just make sure you put that piece of tape over the old, over that old yeah. VHS you're using. Gotta, or oh, I learned my work. lesson. I learned my lesson. You got to yeah. use that. Uh, what was the what's the setting to it's like ELS or something? I forget what it is. Yes, uh, SP, right? SP. Now, ELS is what Dr. Kelson has took in, in school to, to learn English. <laughs> yeah, dummy. <laughs> English is a second language, but now it's like his first, right, Doctor? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. All right, guys, let, let's get on to, uh, you know, the TLC card itself. As I said, you got 12 matches on there. Uh <laughs> Unless somebody knows if any of these are confirmed for pre-show, which, which I do not have that information in front of me. Or at least it's not updated on the newwwe.com. Uh, but please speak up. But because of that, I'm just going to start at the bottom and go towards the top. You got a good old-fashioned chairs match. Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton in this one. Uh, a man called Wire, do you expect Mysterio's mask to stay on the entire time? Absolutely not. I don't... I don't know why you would step into the ring with this man at, at this point in his career. I mean, something's something's clicked, something snapped in, in Randy Orton's head, and, and I would not, uh, I would not be in the ring with that man. Yeah, Warren, I gotta agree with you on that. And I, I think Randy Orton has snapped a long, long time ago. I know Mysterio is back. Uh, you know, he seems rejuvenated. 
a new lease on life back on live television, but I still don't think it's going to be enough. I think this is a classic big man squashes little man match. And Randy Orton, you know, I'm he's collecting that, trophies. I'm hoping. Well, I'm hoping that Randy Orton is is gonna really play up the fact that he's the bigger man in this. Maybe utilize a choke slam, uh, flex a little bit more than he usually does, uh, do some push ups, <laughs> uh, puff his chest out like Hell, Hillbilly Jim. I think Randy Orton needs to relish the fact that he kind of, for a pay per view match, he's got kind of an easy one tonight. Is this just revenge for, you know, past WrestleManias where Rey Mysterio captured his first world title by pinning Randy Orton? Do you think this goes that far back? Yeah, absolutely, because if everyone knows that that was a one-on-one -on -one match, Randy Orton would have had his big WrestleMania moment where he won the championship, but Ray stole that just because Kurt Angle was involved. So it sounds like we're going with a clean sweep for Randy Orton. In, in Easy this, pick. In this chairs match here. I got to keep us going. Uh, Long Allen, you're going to have to smarten me up about this unless a man called Wire does. This is the finals of the Mixed Match Challenge Season 2. Uh, I, I guess this is for number 30, both gender of the Royal Romans this year. You got R Truth and Carmella taking on Jinder Mayhall and Alicia Fox. Not a lot of star power in this match. I'll say that. I'm on the road to Home Depot, and this, this Home Depot is up on a hill, so the Talking about the mixed match challenge, the, the, the 30 for Royal Rumble, but some people don't even think that's the best part because the winners also get a paid trip to anywhere in the world. Could you imagine winning a wrestling match and getting to pick anywhere in the world to go vacation? I don't know where I'd go. Why are WrestleMania? Why? Where, where would you pick? Uh, I, I think you got to take an all expensive trip, you know, down to Cancun, Triple J. Where, where else would you go? Wherever they have the best ice cream, I think, is where a man called Wire is. <laughs> Wherever you can get a goddamn daiquiri is where you would go. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, wherever that trip is, I mean, I think the, the important part is number 30 in your respective Royal Rumbles. I think it's only happened once in a Royal Rumble where number 30 is actually one. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, Triple J, but I believe it's only once. Uh, uh, once, once for sure, per, perhaps more than once. Now I, I'll look. At, I'll look while you talk. Um, but this is going to be huge. I, I think the fact that I think that the the semifinals were huge as uh, Bailey lost uh, to Alicia Fox and and um, Ginger Mahal. But then the shocker is that the Miz and Asuka didn't get past uh, Carmella and Our Truth. I think that's going to be great. I can't wait for a good dance break, right, at Long Island? I mean, this is the most unlikely final to any tournament I've ever seen in my life. I, I can't believe it, especially with how badly these two teams performed during the regular season of the mixed match challenge season two. But that's what that's what it's all about: just getting into the tournament and the playoff portion of it. And now here we are, and I'm I'm waiting for a dance break. I'm looking for some uh, some uh, mantras and. I don't know. I, I'm hoping that Jinder wins because I want to see a skit where Jinder takes Alicia Fox to India. So I'm picking Jinder and Alicia. Yeah, I, th I don't think there's any way that uh, Carmella and R-Truth don't walk out of this uh, as champion. Here's the funny part is if R-Truth wins number 30, I still fully expect him to come out number one for some weird reason <laughs> at the Royal Rumble. Well, he's often confused. <laughs> Yes, often confused. Uh, I'm not going to pick a winner on this one because uh, almost in protest, I don't like that this gives away number 30. Why? I, I think that's a, that's a tournament. A, because you know who's going to be number 30. You're not supposed to know that unless that is put, you know, unless that is a stipulation on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown Live leading up to the Royal Rumble. Why? This, this is, this is leading up to the Royal Rumble. What are you talking? It has about? to be for. It has to. This be has been a three-month tournament. Three-month tournament J. that's been going on. No surprise. No surprises come out of number thirty anymore. Yeah. If there's a surprise entrance, what was AJ like? Seven or something? Uh, he was three. Well, yeah, was three. Triple three. H a surprise when he won the championship? No, I'll tell you the best surprise at number thirty ever was the big dog in 2017. <laughs> oh. Well. 
Triple J, I don't know what you're complaining about. This has been a storyline going on for three months. It's been a grueling tournament. It's involved both brands giving them equal opportunity. This is a big match. What's, what do you, what's your issue? I would, and maybe I'll pick Jinder and Alicia because you're right. I would like to see the footage of Jinder Mayhall and Alicia Fox, you know, on vacation, per, perhaps turning into a romantic escapade. I think that would be good television. What would it be like if those two ever hooked up? I've always wanted oh. to do that. <laughs> Shanti. Well, we're going to find out uh, about a different match. Two individuals hooking up. A cruiserweight champion, Buddy Murphy, taking on Cedric Alexander, the challenger. I Again, I, I'm not familiar with the 205 Live product unless it's featured on SmackDown Live. But I'm guessing this personal issue is just uh, you know a rematch. Cedric Alexander's, uh, you know, stipulation. Uh, yeah, this is his uh, his uh, mandatory rematch. He's had to wait until he was uh, ready, according to Drake Maverick, and now Cedric's ready, and he gets his rematch against Buddy Murphy of a classic contest that took place in Australia. No home field advantage here. Neutral site. Finally, going to determine who the better cruiserweight is, and I mean. Cedric went on a little skid, a mini skid after that loss, but I think he's picked himself back up, and I think he's ready to get his belt back. Dr. Calzone, as you know something about uh, skids, right? I know you've seen a lot of patients coming in, a lot of symptoms. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be a tough challenge. Buddy Murphy, he's looking uh, pretty unstoppable right now. How does a guy look that big and only weigh 205, Dr.? <laughs> I'm going to say it's x lax I think that's what it is. You just empty out your system right before your match. You know, right you got to time it right now because right if not, it ends up all over the mat. But, right uh, before the weigh in, he's just taking x lax and just sitting on the, on the toilet. Uh, Hold on, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> uh, well, you know, right, now, some, some, people think it's, some people think it's unfair that the weigh in's so far before the, the match. Do you think the weigh in should happen as the, as the competitors enter the ring? I think they should have a scale on, on the entrance ramp. <laughs> You're not allowed to enter the ring until you get you, on the scale. Yeah, you you know you can take your boots off. That that would be fine, but you gotta leave your trunks on. Well, the mother of Miss Melissa Beth would very much uh, like it like if that happened because she is not a fan of weights. <laughs> uh, Long Island, I guess we we can't really mention this match without actually talking about um, what happened on Tuesday with uh, Mustafa Ali making a huge appearance. I mean, is, is this what's going on on 205? I feel like Daniel Bryan actually got to appear in a division that was more worthy his skill set this past Tuesday. Well, D Daniel Bryan took on Mustafa Ali, a dream match. If you're a fan of 205 Live, it was a, a great moment, although Daniel Bryan running down people who... You know, if you have kids and they play soccer or football or any kind of sport, you need an SUV. You need four-wheel drive. I don't know why he was disparaging Mustafa Ali for wanting to, you know, travel with his family in comfort. What is wrong with that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with um, with Buddy Murphy on this one. He just seems like he's too he's too big. I mean, when you're when you're at the cusp of that 205 limit, I feel like you just have an advantage over all the competition, including Cedric. Well, Cedric's over just at barely 205-2. Remember, when he was in Ring of Honor Triple J, he was like 245. Yeah, yeah, he, he was up there. He, he was a little bigger, shed a lot of pounds uh, to, to be in that Cruiserweight Classic. If, if I had to predict, I, I'm going to go with Buddy Murphy in this one just because I like consistency, and I don't like titles changing hands too much. So that's really my rationale. <laughs> well, we know, we know Wired's real rationale for obvious reasons. Uh, the doctor pick... Uh, yeah, I got Buddy Murphy for the victory. Oh, uh, well, I'm telling you, Doctor, I think they'll skid the... It's over for Cedric Alexander. I think he cleared it up. You're going to watch him win that championship tonight, and that might steal the show. It's going to be a hell of a match. I think I think that's where you might see stairs used, Triple J. We can only hope. Next up, we got a guitar... Uh, a guitar being suspended high above the ring. This is a ladder match, Elias taking on uh, the almighty Bobby the Lashley and uh, Long Island just sporting us up on this. You don't just have to retrieve the, the guitar to win the match, correct? No, you see Triple J how it's going down is <laughs> the guitar is going to be up in the sky 
And then whoever grabs it with the ladder ha, is going to be able to use it. Yeah, you see, and it's going to be the almighty Bobby Lashley grabbing the guitar, and he can use it on Elias. The Elias can't even play his guitar no more. Ha. Now, Wired, if Elias grabs this guitar first, can he can he stop the urge to play in front of the fans? I feel like that, himself that, over. that man lives to play, right? So who knows? He might uh, he might want to get one last use out of that uh, guitar uh, before he bashes over the back of, of Bobby oh, Lashley. How um, good would that be if he if Lashley's you know he he's out in the corner, pre- he's predisposed and, and beat up a little bit. So then Elias has time to go get the la- the guitar, and he grabs the guitar and gets down, and then the lights go down, and JoJo goes, ladies and gentlemen, Elias, <laughs> and he plays in the middle of the match. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. I wouldn't rule anything out on that. Just because of Leo Rush on the outside, I'm going to have to deal with the almighty. I mean, this is a great match. This is like a throwback. This is This match reminds me of great feuds like – with, with stipulations like Jake the Snake and Rick Martell in a blindfold match. Oh. You know, just personal issues, stipulation to settle it. This is what it's all about. This might be my favorite match on the card. Although I wish it was it was just on a pole. I, I think he got too many ladders already. I would prefer if it was on a pole. How could you have? You can't have too many ladders and tables, ladders and chairs. Yeah, Triple J, this is the one pay-per-view where you can have as many tables, ladders, and chairs as you, as you damn well please. Infinite uh, amounts. You know, this is... This is not your your typical just WrestleMania you know melee melee of, of eight competitors for the Intercontinental Title. This is this is tables, ladders, and chairs. The more the merrier. And uh, oh, I, feel, hold, I feel hold on, uh, Wired. I'm, I actually just got to this Home Depot. Let me. I'm I'm, I'm at the drive thru I'm supposed to get my order. One sec. Hold on. Yeah. You're out. They're out. What? They're out of loud ladders. We got to go to the next Home Depot. Honey, what? Keep Man. driving. Miss Elizabeth's driving. Which well, guys? We're driving to another Home Depot. They're out of ladders at that one. Long Island can be using so many tonight. Can you send me the address of that Home Depot? I've yet to hit a, a drive-through Home Depot in my uh, in my lifetime. Um, this is gonna be great, uh, though. Yeah, Wired on the eastern on the eastern seaboard. They're really popular because it's cold. People don't want to get out of their cars. How do you pick up plywood though? That just seems really hard. Anyway, <laughs> God, um, good truck. <laughs> Uh, I, I think the advantage is going to go to Bobby Lashley because he has that little squirm, you know, dot of a person in the in, the, in his corner, and you know he's going to get involved somehow. Uh, I, I wish Elias would stop and play, but I feel like Bobby Lashley is going to take the advantage of this one. Uh, do you do you so to win the match? Do you just have to hit him with the guitar, or do you still have to pin him? I feel like you still have to pin him. Oh, I well, think I, there's pain involved. Yeah, well then I'm just I'm gonna go with the lies. You know he has other guitars hiding somewhere. An artist always, a musician always has more than one guitar. Now can the match end before you actually grab the guitar, or does it have to be after? I, I, I don't think so. I think I think it's like war games where everybody's gonna be inside before the yeah. match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like a coal miner's glove match. I'm excited for Bobby Lashley to do his ass pose and then get smashed with the guitar in the asshole. <laughs> It could definitely happen. Uh, we got to keep moving here on with this card. This next match, a clash of nation, nations. Finn Balor, Drew McIntyre. No stipulations involved. You really don't need any on this one. It's going to be hard hitting, and I'm I'm going to go against the demon. I'm going to go against the demon unless the demon shows up, and in that case, I'm going to go with the demon. But if since we don't know that the demon is you know scheduled for the card, I got to go Drew in this. So then let me let me just to clarify Triple J. So if the demon shows up but there's no demon, then you're picking against the demon. But if the demon shows up as the demon, then you're picking the demon to beat Drew McIntyre at TLC. It's that simple. It's easy. I, I understood here. It makes sense to me, and I think I'm going to go the same route, uh, but I don't think that demon's showing up. I heard that Finn Balor was a little bit under the weather this week, and... Drew McIntyre is so calculated. He knows everything he's doing in there. He's got a plan, and he's physically superior. I don't see how Finn Balor stands a chance. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on hedging your bet there, Triple J, but uh, unfortunately, hedging's not, not permitted in the state of California. Maybe where you're at, those betting rules are, are can apply, but I, I don't see a way... Um, 
the Finn Balor pulls this out. I mean, the sheer size factor in this one is, is just too much for him to to to, to overcome. Uh, Drew McIntyre is just an immense human being, uh, and that Claymore kick is just gonna demolish. Even if it is the the demon, I don't see how he pulls it out. Doctor Calzonis, are are you gonna be the odd man out and pick uh, Finn Balor on this one? Because the, where is TLC at again? Where what San Jose, Jose California? I, I've heard that's a Balor country out there. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting because if Finn Balor does come out come out as a demon, what happens if like Drew McIntyre comes out as like the Loch Ness monster or something? So we could see like <laughs> we could we could see two monsters just battling it out in the ring in the arena, and then no one's gonna be safe in San Jose. Uh, oh, but you know what? It's, it's gonna turn into a kaiju big battle. In TLC. <laughs> <laughs> just, just two people transforming into. The creatures or whatever, but I, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna be the odd man. I'm going with Finn Balor. I think he's gonna pull it out. A, a demon can beat a Loch Ness monster every time. Okay, wait, no. All right, let's go over this. A creature match. I'm picking Nessie over a demon every day. Nah, I'm gonna have to go with the demon. Yeah, I, I, I think a, I think the demon could be could beat a monster. I, well, Nessie's in the water. A demon is yeah, but this fire. Is... Water beats fire. That's yeah, but there ain't gonna be there ain't gonna be no water. There ain't gonna be no water in San Jose. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a shark tank. There's a ton of water. I got a demon beating a Loch Ness monster. Oh, well, I'm hoping I, that ne Messi McIntyre shows up. That'd be good. I, I hear rumors are a lot of people that are um, that are for Finn Balor are gonna get lost on the way uh, from Balor Country to the arena. Uh, San Jose is a little tough of a, of a city to navigate yourself around these days. Yeah, you gotta, you got to watch out for those dirt roads out there. All right, for, for the sake of Miss Melissa's sanity here, let's keep it moving. Natalia versus Ruby Riot, a tables match. Oh, Very yes. personal. Who is going to go through that Jim Nye Hart table? Yeah, baby. Yeah. Natalia is going to beat Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot and her inconvenient squad, they, they – they need to be put in their place, and their place is through a table. This is the most personal match of the evening, and I can't. I still can't believe Ruby Riot did that on Monday Night Raw. She should have been a real general manager would have suspended someone for doing something so horrible, poking fun at someone's d recently pe deceased father. I mean, if you did that at your job, you'd be fired or at least suspended. Wired. Uh, uh, yeah. But I mean, I think that's I think that's a shout out to us for calling them the Inconvenience Squad instead of the Riot Squad. They're they're actually starting uh, to mess with people's minds a little bit more, especially here. Uh, Natty is 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 just in a weird place right now because of the unfortunate events that happened with her father. But the Riot Squad are going to take advantage of that, uh, and I think they're going to take advantage of it tonight. Uh, the Riot Squad uh, too much for Natty to overcome, and if she gets through, if she gets put through her own father's table. Uh, who knows what uh, what kind of mentality Natalia is going to have after this match? Yeah, I mean it's it's three on one. You've got the Riot Squad versus uh, uh, you know little old Natty here. There is nobody in her in her corner. I understand that she dedicated the match for her late father, but again, it's three on one. And oh, can you imagine backstage in the locker room what the minor and mean squads that you know the pranks they're going to be pulling just to try to get in the heads of, of Natty. I mean, maybe maybe they'll take they'll take the sign from her locker room and you know turn it around and like write you know write somebody else on the back like Bo Dallas so Natty can't find her locker room all night. She's Bo just Dallas. Calls. Bo Dallas. They're gonna be tied. They're gonna be tying her shoes together. <laughs> she has to untie them. You might it might it might break an egg and like throw it in a duffel bag or something. <laughs> they're gonna put her dastardly thing. They're gonna put her clothes inside out so she has to <laughs> put them back. <laughs> they're gonna oh. steal steal one of her socks. <laughs> oh, uh, the work. I'm I'm really hoping that they don't you know like pour water all over Natty's socks. That's the worst. That would be so hard to wrestle a match in wet socks. I know Triple J. You're a fan of wet socks, but most people don't want their socks all wet and sticky. Uh, most most people do not want that. And yeah, I, like I said, I'm going to ride squad. I, I believe it's three on one in this match. Hey, uh, Triple J, I'm out on uh, 22, not far from you. You need me to pick you up an extra ladder, table, or chair? 
Uh, no, I, I'm all right. And if you were thinking about stopping by Clem's, don't worry. I got some extra sauce in the fridge. <laughs> sauce. Oh, okay, cool. I'll, I might swing by then to grab some before I head over to my pack. All right, sounds good. But let's keep on going here. I think this may actually be the best match of the card. This is a triple threat match for the SmackDown Live Tag Team titles. You got the Usos versus the Champions, the Bar versus the New Day, and a man called Wired. Have you heard which two members are going to be representing the New Day, or is this going to be Lucha House Party rules? <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about it, Triple J, in a triple threat match, does it matter who represents? Because I believe everyone will be eligible to participate. All three members of the New Day will be able to Well, in a triple threat match, I believe that there are no disqualifications, so what would stop the New Day from actually competing, you're, having all three members right. compete? Oh, uh, having honor. Oh, come on. These guys are flailing around with pancakes all day long. You think they have honor? Come on. Yes, the New Day is very honorable. They're not going to do that. They would never stoop that. Way. I know they're, they're not stoop. honorable for obvious reasons. Come on. I don't know what reasons those are. All I know is they're there to crowd please and win championships. And I got the New Day pulling it out tonight because I've been watching the Usos and their super kicks aren't as high as they usually are. They're not as crisp. They're not getting the force behind them as much. So normally I'd pick the team that can super kick here, but I'm going with the New Day because I just think the Usos are banged up and the bar, I don't know, there's there's something going on with them that I'm, I'm not... I don't see them lasting too long as, as an elite tag team. Yeah, I was unsure if I was going to... I guess if I'm picking with my heart, I want to pick the Usos. Uh, but I almost... I don't I almost want to go with their the soul. Has, has anybody heard if the Big Show is going to be out there? Because I mean, no, if he, he is, then I'm going to up the bar. He could show up. Who knows? But, I mean, if you got creatures showing up earlier in the night, I don't think WWE is going to overbook another creature in another match. So I don't anticipate seeing the Big Show involved. I, I, I got to go with the bar then. He, even if the Big Show is not there, I, I think the bar... Uh, so this you know, discussion we just had was for no reason because you were going to go with the bar anyway. <laughs> no, no. I, I was... Told, I said I, was, <laughs> friends of the show. I wanted to pick the u with my heart, but now I'm using my brain. Ice, ice, shamey. What? Dr. That's... Calsonis, the, uh, the, the bar wrapped... So Bar did a rap the other day. I don't know if you saw it. They, they were doing it to the beat of Ice Ice Shamey. Miss Elizabeth really disliked the segment. I thought it was a great rap. Um, do you think the Bar is going to last as a tag team much longer? Because, I don't know, I could, I could for some reason I feel like Sheamus is looks like he's primed and ready for a World Championship run. Uh, I did get to see some of that awful rap battle. Um, just like every every. Every rap group, they always got to do their own thing after. Uh, they have been together for a while. I think today I see them uh, doing their own thing after. See, I don't, be I don't believe groups, you. All rap groups break up and go solo. You're right. I don't believe that you actually saw it because you called it an awful rap bottle. That thing was the best highlight of probably of the week. If not for uh, Mystery Man coming to Raw, I would be talking about that. Well, a man called um, Wired uh, as... as no offense, but you're a white guy, so you probably thought that was bars all day. So <laughs> bars, bars, bars. <laughs> bars. Uh, I'm I'm abstaining for this match for two obvious reasons. One, because I'll never pick the bar, but um, I'm sure it'll be a great match. Just let me know what happens. I'll probably be downstairs making some uh, some fajita slash uh, uh, quesadillas. But the Bubba Ray Dudley. Uh, Triple J is super pissed. This isn't a TLC match. He says these three deserve a chance to top what the Dudleys, Edge, Christian, and the Hardys did. Are you upset this is not a TLC match? No, I, I am not upset about that. Again, I, I think there are there is such thing as too many ladders on one card, but you know, we, we've got WrestleMania and WWE, they usually like to throw in a, you know, a big cluster ladder match at the biggest pay-per-view of the year, so perhaps we will see it. And let, let's keep on moving with this card here. Next, we're going to talk about the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match, which is probably not going to be the main event. I, I would not object if it was the two main events on the card. And the question I have to ask you, Long Allen, is which one of these gals can super kick the best? Oh, th this isn't really the super, uh, the super uh, kicking uh, kind of uh, crowd in this match, but 
Uh, Charlotte's got the longest limbs. She can do a big boot. Char but it doesn't matter. Even if there was a super kicker in this, you're talking about the greatest professional athlete in the world today versus Asuka and the man, Becky Lynch. And I I'm going with Charlotte, obviously. she's You always pick the best athlete, the best at their craft. She's the best wrestler. And it's the first ever women's TLC match for the championship. Uh, Charlotte is always winning and, and achieving in big firsts. And uh, this is going to be no different. You're talking about the three icons of their generation. The three great women's wrestlers of today, all in the ring at the same time, trying to climb a ladder and retrieve that women's belt from the SmackDown Live. And, I mean, it's going to look so great when Charlotte's the one doing it. I got Charlotte beating the man and beating the Empress. Now, uh, man called water. Can you tell us what happened the last time Charlotte was in a first ever stipulation match of Last Woman Stand? Uh, she was not the last one standing. She was not the last one stand. She also wasn't yeah. worthy enough to participate in the first ever women's Royal Rumble. I'll, I'll throw that out there as well. Uh, well, that's that's. Hey, that's hey, the what side are you on, sir? There was an article posted the other day about um, they're uh, at, at Royal Rumble this year. They're having an actual uh, fan fest, somewhat access. I don't know if you guys noticed uh, Becky Lynch's uh, uh, tickets went uh, uh, sold out in 90 seconds. And, and I, I'm telling you, there's not much that lasts 90 seconds with Becky Lynch, right? Triple J. I mean, you can confirm that, right? You're, you're telling me. Yeah. I so mean, anytime, and, anytime the man is in t is around, you know, Triple J is not going to be able to hold. Hold his composure for more than ninety seconds, but hey, I, I give it to the man. It's a revolution what she's got going on. I said last week, similar to the Yes Movement, similar to Stone Cold Steve Austin, she's well on her way to maybe main eventing WrestleMania. She might win the Royal Rumble because Charlotte won't be in it because she's going to be the champion. So Becky Lynch coming off a facial breakage. I mean, her face is broken. A, a chair, a table, a ladder could redo some damage here, Triple J. The doctor will tell you, when, when you're in a violent match like this, pre-existing conditions matter, right, doctor? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, we really don't know what percentage she's at. She could be still 60%. She could be at 80%, and it's, you know, it's just, it's a very dangerous match for someone coming back from a serious injury. I, I, I just don't understand. We're, we're talking like there's only two individuals in this match. Well, what about, you know, the athlete that was standing tall? You know, over prone people's bodies at the end of SmackDown Live. And of course, that is the Empress, Asuka. She is a rejuvenated career, uh, you know, career going right now. I believe this is going to be a defining moment. And I think Asuka's due. Uh, uh, you're, well, you're picking I mean, Asuka. I, 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 I'm, with wow. you. I'm picking I'm Asuka. With you. I'm with you. I'm with, I'm with you, Triple J. I got Asuka. She looks, she looks better than she has in months, but. What, she has to climb like two or three more runs rungs on the ladder than Charlotte does. It's just math. It's way, it's going to take way more effort for Oscar to win than Charlotte to win. Not after you get kicked. After Oscar kicks you, she could take her time climbing up that ladder. You know, and, well, with how much she she if she gets put in that figure eight, how's she even going to climb that ladder? Yeah. With her arms, she going to do a handstand to the top top of the ladder? Come on. Uh, this is definitely more than just a TLC match, gentlemen. This is going to be a uh, tables, ladders, chairs, and kendo stick match. I guarantee there will be some sort of bamboo shooting out uh, from the skulls of these ladies. It's, it's going to be intense. It's going to be immense. I, I, I just I don't see how anybody stops the man's momentum right now. I, I, I just can't see it. I don't see well, it. Well, I think the man could stop herself. She gets overzealous. Who knows? She might not even make it to the match. What if she goes to the back and tries to confront Ronda Rousey? They are in the same building at the same time. Well, that's a great question. If, if, if well, you know what, Ronda Rousey has beef to pick with a couple of ladies in this in this match. Who knows if she gets involved? Uh, you know, she hates to lose in any sense of the imagination. Surprise, she's still around the WWE at this point. To be honest, with you. but anyway, I mean, who? God forbid, Becky Lynch. You know. Is walking the backstage area eating some avocado toast and Ronda Caesar because if she does, it's over. Well, it's definitely over for one of them. I will say that. And let's get to that match now. Let, let's get to Ronnie versus Nia on this one. A man called Wired. You've been very critical 
of uh, you know both of these individuals, just like I have. But I, I will give some respect and say Nia Jax was probably the best promo that she's given in the time that she's been on television. Uh, I, it had intensity. I believed everything that she said about it. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to pick her to win this this one. I, I think it really depends on the order of the match. If this match happens before the SmackDown Live match, you know, I see one outcome. If it, if it happens after the match, I see another outcome. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's starting to sound like uh, like Uncle Dave here. Depending on where the the match actually took place, is actually going to determine the, the how many stars I give a match. I mean, this is it's a match, Triple J. And here's match the thing: match placement is very important. You're going to hear a lot more about that later on. Um, Triple J, here's here's the key factor in this entire thing. That 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 promo that Nia Jax gave was that in a huge spotlight? Was that in the main event of, of a pay per view or in a championship match? No, it was on Raw in the middle of some you know normal segment. Nothing too crazy. What's going to happen when she actually has this match for the championship on a pay per view? Triple J, you can answer that question you, for me. Are you alluding to that she's going to be just like most girls? That is exactly what I'm alluding to. Uh, you know, Nia oh, Jax wait, are has most girls. Are most girls six foot one inch tall Samoan women weighing three hundred pounds? Are most are most girls able to shrug a Ronda Rousey judo throw off? Nope. She's so much bigger. I mean, no. Nope. I'm, I'm gonna always pick Ronda Rousey whenever she's wrestling, unless it's against Charlotte. But th- this match, it, it's not going to be some kind of cakewalk. You're, this is Nia Jax, and she has said that that title is mine. Mine. You, 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 you talk about the Tamina factor. You the talk Tamina about factor is what's different this no, time. No, you talk about thirty seconds more. If Ronda had thirty seconds more with Nia Jax at Money in the Bank this year, she would have had the title well before she actually. Won I agree. It. Okay, I agree. And that's exactly I what's going to happen this week. I mean, what about the out. And then, and, and then, what ended up happening? Nia Jax ended up losing the title to Alexa Bliss, and then she lost her rematch. I mean, this is obscure that you think that Nia Jax actually has some sort. No matter where this match takes place, at what point of the of the night, that's exactly what happens. Is Nia Jax becomes just like most girls and doesn't succeed. Well, I don't. I, maybe most girls when they face Ronda Rousey, but not most girls in general. But. The Tamina factor is different here, Wired. You got to admit that. You don't know how Ronda Rousey, you want to talk about great super kicks. Might be the best one going in it. If Tamina lands that when the referee's not looking, Ronda's in trouble. Well, who, Tamina broke a face, I remember, not a few years back. Whose face did she break with a super kick? Was it, was, it Be- was it Nikki Bella? I can't remember now. Anyway, you're right. That is a devastating uh, super kick. Who knows? Um... What kind of uh, impact she's going to actually have in this match if the referee's going to actually let her get involved? Um, does she even have a manager's license? I don't. I don't know. Though she's a she's a relative. Relatives, I think, are, are okay, right? Right, Triple J. Uh, yeah, I, it, it, it's very confusing. We, we don't have enough. We, you know, we, we really need Doctor, our lawyer. Doctor, how? Discuss that. I mean, we're talking about whether or not Nia Jax is common. How common is it that you get 300 pounds Samoan women in, in your doctor's office? Nah, I've I've seen maybe 250 pound Mexican women, but I haven't I haven't had anyone in that size or range. I mean, I like this new attitude she has. I mean, yeah, she might have not got her last time, but with this new attitude, she she, she could do anything. Right? I think she has a good chance of beating, beating Ronda Rousey. Let's talk about Seth Rollins versus well, Dean. Hold, hold on, Triple J. I'm just getting over to the other Home Depot. One sec. I'm going to see if they have my order. Uh, yeah, we ordered 29 ladders. 20. Just no throw ladders. them in the back seat. They're out of ladders. We got to go to the next one, honey. This Melissa is driving. Everyone's out of tables and ladders in this town. I mean, it's weird, that they're, it's weird that they're out of them there. I mean, considering that the the pay per view is about three thousand miles away, Long Island. That's well, a man called when there's shortages, is, you have to get them from other Home Depots. Though. And everyone in America is purchasing tables, ladders, and chairs in anticipation for tonight's event. Wired, and uh, you know, I, God forbid, I never want. I hate going to this place. But we're gonna have to trial Lowe's, Triple J. Home Depot is not doing it for me. Well, you know if. If you can't get them at Lowe's, I got a number for a good busy beaver in the area that you may want to try also. But but right now, let's talk about Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. Uh, Dr. Calzonis, in your medical opinion, do you think Dean Ambrose will be wearing a full hazmat suit 
for this match? Uh, I mean, that's going to be pretty tough because if he gets a hole in it, I mean, he's still going to get all that, uh, all the disease and disgust from whatever city he, in San Jose. So it's pretty hard. I mean, it's a no-no win. It's not a win-win situation. You go in there with the hazmat suit, there's a hole, it still gets in. And uh, I hope he doesn't, just, just so it won't interfere in this match. Or do you see any extra precautions at Dean Ambrose? Like, is he going to be wearing a beekeeper's outfit or, or something like that? A <laughs> beekeeper's outfit. Uh, I definitely see him uh, probably in a bubble suit. You know, a big, you know, like, like, like bubble suit. Like one of those big hamster balls? Yeah, exactly. Just coming out and, you know, and trying to get in the ring with that. Um, San Jose is, is, is not the best town. I mean, it, it's it's almost like the armpit of California. Let's just be 100% honest. And I'm with Dean Ambrose on this one. Plus, none of us like Seth Rollins. So, uh, Dean Ambrose, uh, diseases uh, or not, he's, he's going to be uh, holding that IC championship at the end of the night. Well, I yeah. hope so. But is it worth it for Dean Ambrose to actually touch that slimy scumbag Seth Rollins with his actual hands? I mean, it, he's going to have to find really secure gloves that he can also get a grip with while also avoiding contact with Seth Rollins because that ectoplasm that emit that will emit from him could get Dean some sort of gross disease and he might end up dying as the IC champion and nobody wants that. So that's why I think it's unfair Seth Rollins is able to be the champion. Uh, but hopefully Dean takes it away from them. Um, th this match, thank God it's for the championship, though. I really didn't want to see a general manager slash, slash IC champion uh, on uh, Monday Night Raw when Baron Corbin faced Seth Rollins. That was a no talk about a no win situation, Dr. Calsonis. Good lord, that match. But Dean Ambrose, the world's pulling for you. Just don't get sick in there, man. Now, Long well, Allen, are you comparing Dean Ambrose? I mean, excuse me, are you comparing Seth Rollins's, you know, his slime and filth uh, to an unfair advantage a la Lex Luger's titanium plate in his forearm? Yeah, exactly. It's like a titanium plate in the forearm. It's like wearing a chest protector uh, made of steel. It, it's it's an unfair advantage that I think uh, the referee should, you know, he's going to have to wear gloves and a mask to inspect, but make sure that Seth Rollins should be forced to wear a burka when he wrestles is what I'm getting at. He should be forced to be covered head to toe because if you touch him, it's lethal. It could be deadly. It's an unfair advantage. Doctor? I can care less. This, these two guys suck. I don't care. <laughs> Just hope, hopefully it's not the main event like the pay-per-view poster would allude to because we all know what happened the last time Seth Rollins was in a main event. This I mean, is it a coincidence that, you know, Michael Cole talks about how bad Raw is or ratings are bad or people talk about a bad pay-per-view uh, and uh, it all has one thing in common. Seth Rollins, people. Seth freaking Rollins. Two, two things, Long Island. Seth Rollins and no big dog. That's what I would say. And no, and no big dog. Do you right. think that the that the uh, you know the visual artist or the, or the Seth Rollins promos? I don't know. Could we blame Raw's sl uh, sliding ratings to the uh, you know the art layout team who put Seth Rollins on the TLC post? Well, you know those posters are laid out months in advance. I mean, they might have thought that, yeah. that Seth Rollins was gonna. You know, probably potentially face the big dog in this match. Something like you know, more more noteworthy of, of actually having um, him embrace the cover. So, in all honesty, if the ratings for Raw are really dropping, the only thing I can attribute it to is just the masterful job that Paige is doing as the general manager of SmackDown. That's, That's the show everybody's more excited for. You're right. You're right. And let's go on to a match now. Now, I'm not going to list this as the main event, but if you've been watching the programming for you know. For, you know, basically for the past three years uh, you'll know that Raw is always favored as the main event even though a title is not on the line although this one something very big is on the line and that is the general manager permanent general manager position of Monday Night Raw you got Constable now uh, let me let me ask this if anybody knows if Constable Corbin wins is he can we still call him Constable Corbin or do we have to call him general manager Permanent general manager Baron Corbin. So he's no longer a constable if he wins. He's not a constable right now. There's the, who is he constabling for? The whole roster. Uh, he's he's the general manager elect currently. But it's coming to an end because he's going to lose to a one-armed monster. 
you, you think a one-armed monster can still defeat a, a two-armed uh, lone wolf? Absolutely. We're, this is Braun Strowman we're talking about. He's not like most monsters. I think the one thing we're missing is, Bron- is uh, Baron Corbin is set steadfast in the fact that he's not even having this match. And I don't think he's actually going to prepare for it. He's, uh, he's not mentally prepared. He's probably not physically prepared. He might show up with a beer gut. Uh, probably hasn't worked out in a couple weeks. Uh, you think he's that? He's going to be that arrogant? Why? I think he is that arrogant, to be honest with you. Uh, Triple J and, and Baron Corbin, when he sees the monster among men actually show up in that match, he's not even going to know what to do with himself. It might be a, a quick squash. Uh, no arms would be enough to beat uh, Baron Corbin with how unprepared he probably is going to be. Now, now don't he might just eat him. He might just eat him with no arms. He might well, not no, if, you, if you've been eating that hospital food for that long, Barrett Corbin might look appetizing. Now, Doctor Kels, I, I have to ask you. You know, I, I know you run a you know a medical clinic down there for human beings, but in times of need, have you ever performed any, any veterinary work? And I, I want to ask you. You know, I, I know there's chupacabras and a, a bunch of things running around down there. Have you ever done any medical work on a uh, on an animal or even a monster? Well, I mean, in Mexico, I mean, there's only about one or two doctors there, so we always have to do the. Sh- we always have to watch the sheep and the and the cows and all that stuff. But so uh, you're really, a jack of all trades. Yeah, pretty much. S- somehow, I'm still picking. Bro- oh, let me say this: if Braun Strowman oh, shows stop up, stop hedging I'm, your goddamn bets. I, I, oh, Jesus I'm still Christ. picking Braun. I'm picking Braun Strowman if he shows up, and if he makes weight. Well, I mean, <laughs> makes weight. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with hedging your bets now, Triple J. Gambling's legal in your state. You go ahead and just make sure you win. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we're talking this Braun Strowman versus Constable Corbin match. A one-armed monster versus a lone wolf. Uh, Vinman, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, Vidman, what do you what do you got to say on this monster match? I really want to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah, this match here, uh, probably you know, certainly the one with most on the line. You got to say, you got Baron Corbin could be the permanent general manager of Monday Night Raw. You got Braun Strowman who appears to be you know coming back from a significant injury, yet at the same time poised for a, a championship match. Uh, if he could get a victory here, a-, a lot on the line in this one. No doubt in my mind, Vin Man was going to show up just like no doubt in my mind, Braun Strowman shows up. Wired, you seem surprised that Vin Man showed up. Are you going to be surprised if, if Braun Strowman shows up? Well, no, I, I'm just I'm just making sure that Vin Man doesn't actually charge us for a full uh, uh, limited date here. I mean, it's only been about it's only going to be about ten minutes. You know, if Vinman showing up at the end of this show, part of me starts to think that maybe now Brock Lesnar will make an appearance tonight. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would he show up? <laughs> he's probably not even watching. <laughs> well, he's definitely F five someone off a ladder. You never know. He, he's definitely not watching. Uh, he may be sitting uh, backstage with some good reading material. Um, but, <laughs> was that field and stream? <laughs> uh, yeah, something on uh, or du- duck this, hunting or something. Balance 2019 winter calendar or winter <laughs> catalog. <laughs> you gotta think that what, what would Brock Lesnar need? What would he need to do with a catalog? He probably just says, "Give me one of everything, and then I'll decide what more I want." <laughs> want give me an extra large order of the deer piss. Oh, speaking of orders, hold on. I just pulled up the lows, Triple J. Hold on. Okay. Two? Yeah. We got two dozen chairs. Can you just throw them in the back of the truck? We ordered them for the paper. What do you mean? God! They're out of chairs. All right. There's only one place, honey, that they're going to have everything. Go to the Marburger Mart, and we're going to get everything we need for TLC. I cannot find a goddamn table ladder or chairs chair for myself for tonight. Did you try the local Osh? Just Orchard Supply House? No? Yeah, I, no, I, I we're, hear we're, we're, we're skipping it. We're going the long way. It, it's out you know, out on 22. It's going to be a little bit further. But we're going to the Marburger Mart and Home Goods, and we're getting exactly what we need. Tables, ladders, chairs. And I'm getting stairs, too, now, Triple G. I, I can't take this. 
Yeah, you better. That's probably the safe bet. And let's let's get on to again what I hope is going to be the main event because the WWE Championship is on the line. I kind of doubt that it is going to be the main event. But you, you got the new Daniel Bryan taking on AJ Styles in this one, one on one. This is you know the, the, the third match of the trilogy between these two. It's going to be a hell of a contest. But Vin Man, I got to ask you. You know, at the end of it, is Daniel Bryan, is he going to, you know, stoop down to a level that we've seen recently? Uh, he's definitely going to stoop to to low levels. And, uh, if he, and if he retains the title, does it really matter? Well, of course it matters. You know, I mean, uh, you know, even if he retains the title with some sort of cheating aspirations, people are still going to look on him as, as just a, you know, a bitch ass fool for cheating. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> AJ time. Styles, AJ Styles, you know this matchup here. Yeah, AJ, he's fighting for a lot. The only way he's lost, I'd say, probably in the last several years, is either against Brock Lesnar or by low blow. That's the only way this guy can be defeated. And I, I just have to think that you know he he's got to be ready for it this time. And that's why I'm picking AJ Styles to win this matchup. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if his balls could take another nut shot, though, Vin Man. If, if Daniel Bryan gets that opening, can AJ Styles take one more shot to the nuts in 2018? Well, that's why you gotta wear a, wear a, a sufficient cup. You got you How's gotta have good. Fly around? How are you gonna do phenomenal moves in the air if you got a cup on it? He's, he's gonna be wrestling a, a, a different style. Maybe he's not gonna go in the air as much. Maybe it's gonna be more of a catch as catch can. Well, that's I have so many questions in this match. Is the next nut shot to the nuts AJ's last shot to the nuts? And also, <laughs> is, this, is this also is this the the second match or third? What is this third match between AJ and Debray, or is this the first match between AJ and Bray Wyatt? Because some of us believe that Bray Wyatt has stolen the the body, the vessel of Daniel Bryan. With how different Daniel Bryan's been acting. I don't know. Dr. Kelsonis, in your medical opinion, what do you know about uh, p- possessing of, of human bodies, souls creeping into your <laughs> into you and, and and changing your genetic makeup no. and your personality? Well, Long Island, in Mexico, that's pretty much a religion down there. Uh, it's a pretty scary thing. I mean, it could be possible. Uh, maybe if AJ Styles can bring some holy water, maybe <laughs> under his... Maybe under his breath, say some Bible verses, like demon, something. <laughs> some um, garlic. Yeah, something like that. So <laughs> he's going to have to bring it in Latin. <laughs> yeah. And just summons, like, summons the soul of Bray Wyatt out of Daniel Bryan's body. I hope, they, oh, I hope they do that. That'd be really good. Well, I don't know if that is. I don't know. It might, we'd have to, might have to wait to the Royal Rumble to find out if that conspiracy is actually true. But then... Not only do you have Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles in this match for the WWE title, but I want to ask Vin Man, my other question is, Vin Man, what do you think about the, the WWE title match, the two competitors in it being smaller than the guys in the Cruiserweight title match? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I've, I've been, you know, championing for, for several years for, for Daniel Bryan, at least, uh, to be more uh, participating in a 205 Live type setting. Uh, AJ probably still weighs more than the guys in the uh, in the cruiserweight. I don't think he's at two hundred five, but um, yeah, Daniel Bryan cer- certainly is. But uh, you know, how much would you? You know, it, it, he's definitely a vessel of some sort. But uh, it, how much do you think the soul of of uh, Bray Wyatt weighs? Maybe that's why he's he's the heavyweight champion. Oh yeah, it's real. <laughs> real dense it doesn't show but the density of daniel bryan is is helping out i don't know maybe you'd have to ask the doctor i don't know about spirit weights as much as he might having worked on uh you know mexican spirits and and day of the dead uh you've worked many days of the dead right doctor uh yeah that's correct i don't know i that's it just no days off dr calzonis A man called Ward, I got to ask you, everybody's talking about the, the resiliency or lack thereof of what's between AJ Styles' legs. What what about his leg and his knee itself after the number that Daniel Bryan's been putting on him, utilizing that heel hook, uh, you know, the great effect. 
AJ Styles, he's, you know, I don't think he's going to have the ability to be jumping and flying all around that ring. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, uh, Triple J. He's he, he's injured. He's battled. He's bru- he's he's bruised. But uh, you know, Daniel Bryan, uh, just with a different demeanor, obviously in his eyes. Uh, who knows what 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 stoops he's going to get down to, or how low? I don't know. Whatever. How low he's going to go in this match to actually get over AJ Styles? It's it's, it's what's going it's what it's going to take to actually beat AJ Styles. Because if it, this was a true one on one, AJ has Daniel Bryan's number, but uh, Daniel Bryan's going to do something, and unfortunately I feel like whatever that is, it's going to be enough and he's going to retain that, uh, his title today. Well, I, b- I believe in the Bray Wyatt conspiracy, guys, so I'm going with the, the two-on-one advantage for Daniel Bryan over AJ Styles and still WWE champion. Yes, I'm going to agree. The new Daniel Bryan's going to leave for that title. He better not be leaving with that title because I'm going to get AJ Styles. Well, I just want you also to know that I, I made that prediction while drinking extremely hydrating and delicious water out of a plastic bottle, and I feel great. Mm. <laughs> uh, do we want to get Honey, Big Man's pass recap? Pass me that cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, fo- uh, foil wrapper, I hope. Big Man, do you want to shed some light on any of the other matches since you weren't here? Because you you know you're a part timer. Uh, was this the last match that you, we we discussed? This this was. Uh, well, I will say that uh, probably the, the couple matches I'm looking forward to the most are the women's matches. Um, you, you got this, you know, three-way TLC match. Uh, this is going to be a hell of a contest. Um, and I'm I'm leaning towards Asuka. I just think that the, the bad blood uh, is going to resurface between... Uh, Becky Lynch and Charlotte here, and they're going to cancel each other out. If, if so, Vin Man, do you think the best strategy for Oscar may be like hiding under the ring for the first ten minutes? I, 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 I think that's actually what she's going to do. <laughs> Is uh, you know she, she'll uh, she'll take a powder early, and then uh, she'll get in when it's necessary. Now, do you think Ronda Rousey will get involved in this match? Triple J mentioned something about depending on when this was it this match or the next match. Triple J, depending on yeah, what right. when the match happened on the card, would determine his winner between Ronda and Nia Jax. Well, that's a good thought, uh, but Ronda doesn't seem like somebody who who would get involved where her nose doesn't belong. And that's the TLC card. Wired, take us home. Wired, take us home. What about what about some blood? You can't have tables, chat ladders, chairs, and stairs without blood, Triple J. Brainiacs, tweet it, read it, tell it, shout it, be all about it at the Brain Busters on Twitter, on Instagram Junior, on Facebook. Let us know your predictions for TLC as we get ready to wrap this thing up the right way. It's time for Falls Count Anyway. Now, people have been giving me some flack about hedging my bets on match placement, but let me tell you how important (laughs) match placement is whenever you're booking a pay-per-view, whenever you're planning a pay-per-view. Alon Allen and I, we are going to discuss in depth ROH's last pay-per-view of the year, final battle next week. But I gotta tell you, whenever you start off a pay-per-view, that first music that hits, you want people standing up out of their seats, up on their feet, hooting and hollering. And I don't think Final Battle, they didn't do a good job of this. They didn't place the right people in this position, and that's so important. Now, match two, the people were on their feet. But for a new audience, for people throwing down that $34.95 on traditional pay-per-view, or people on ROHWrestling.com, like myself, using the Honor Club, you know, Some people may have not seen this product before. They may want to see what's new about it. If they see somebody on their their screen that just does not catch their eye immediately, you may lose a paying customer for the rest of your wrestling career. So remember, match placement, so important. And for all you Outlaw Mud Show independent events, after the intermission, the first match then is just equally as important. 
Let me tell you something, Brainiacs, and if you are in the same situation as a Long Island Ice Tea or a man called Wired, and you got a wedding coming up, I hope to God you listened to what Jumpin' Jacob J just said. Match placement on a card is just like planning a wedding and a wedding day and reception. You know, if you're a man called Wired, you got to be thinking to yourself right now, you know, do I have the Mary mariachi band come out before or after the ice cream cart you know you got to be thinking about all these kinds of things you know it is so critical uh you know wedding planning and match placement they're all one in the same and that's why if you have a wedding coming up brainiacs you got to listen to jumpin jacob j talk about match placement and if you're looking for a wedding planner i'm sure jumping jacob j uh, and everybody at Marburger Corporation would be willing to offer offer up their services uh, to help you plan your wedding because nobody books a wrestling card or a wedding what just like Jumpin' Jacob J does. Oh, my brother. <laughs> Testify. Oh, you guys thought I forgot. This week's bitch-ass fool of the week is Bobby Lashley. Now, I know I don't watch Raw, so I don't know how long he's been dressing like that, wearing a leather vest <laughs> and a baseball cap. Jesus Christ. So I don't want to say Bobby Lashley, he's the bitch ass fool, but the person in the back that said, hey, Bobby, you look great. Go out there is also the bitch ass fool of the week. Leo Rush, who didn't say a word about that leather jacket and baseball cap is the bitch ass fool. Bobby Lashley outfit is the bitch ass fool of the week. Jesus, he looked like a created wrestler, but for but in GTA Vice City. He looks like a bouncer at a nightly secret sex club. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bobby Lashley, <laughs> you are the bitch ass fool of the week. <laughs> Brady X in his eye, a man called Wired and and <laughs> You know what? I, I just have to address a couple things. Match placement has nothing to do with this at all. It's a match. <laughs> Whether it's the beginning or at the end, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's a match. And and wedding planning, man, come on. Just have some some drinks of, of Wired's famous sangria, and you're going to have a great night. Who cares what order <laughs> things actually happen in? And then, and then the pitch has full of the week is A. You said like four. Come on. Come on, Doctor. And, and and Long Island, I'm sure you're still trying to find some ladders and, and all that nonsense and, and whatever. Just just get home safe, please. Because I don't want to do this, what I've done today. It's so much work. I hate doing it. Don't make me do it again. Brainiacs, don't forget that after you're done falling off of ladders, into tables, and getting smashed with chairs today... There is no time to recover. There is no time to lick your wounds. You rest up later tonight. And tomorrow, there will be hell to pay. Because Mr. McMahon is going to be on Monday Night Raw. Things are getting shaken up. And also tomorrow, it is officially Royal Rumble season. Which means Royal Rumble promos order of entry the biggest event in the history of the state of Arizona so enjoy TLC tonight protect yourselves at all times if you can find a goddamn table ladder or chair at your local hardware store get ready because we are in with the Royal Rumble tomorrow What's so much work, Why are we having issues with today? Talking? He's very busy, I can tell. Wired, you, you give me a call about that wedding planning <laughs> stuff. I'll give you a, a few tips right now. You don't want the gift you don't want the gift table too close to the buffet line because you'll have people cut it in there. Uh, th- those mini meatballs are overrated. And, and, for, and for God's sake, th- don't put too much silverware on the table. It, it just confuses people. One fork, one spoon, and one butter knife. W- would you be happy if it was made out of plastic? <laughs> Triple J. If the silverware was made out of plastic, I, I, I think he that, would be. 
I think he'd be very happy if he just went up to a counter and they served this food with a if tray. To, I'm and right the silverware you. was already uh, on. I mean, I think that was, that, that was obvious, but I, I think Lauren's going for something a little classier. I, I, I think I might actually uh, go to plated meals just to make Triple J suffer just a little bit more because he's actually got well, to make a you, decision if, at a table. If you do have the plated meals, just have them selected by number. Just a number one, a number two, or a number three. <laughs> <laughs> Triple J, I have, a, I have a question then about... Anyone with plans. stuffed chicken, please raise your hand. <laughs> Triple J, should should the cookie table come out before or after the drag queen rendition of Nia Jax's theme? <laughs> you know what, you you really can't go wrong with a cookie table. At, at any placement on the card. <laughs> and that's the one thing. Well, the cookie table is like a Charlotte match. You can go anywhere on the card and it's going to be great. Go get her, Charlotte. Go get your title. Tonight at TLC, Dr. Kelsonis, uh, do you have any medical advice for the participants putting their bodies on the line tonight? Uh, make sure the ice tomorrow. Make sure there's a lot of ice for tomorrow. Lots of ice. You scared and of ice? Also, God forbid any of you sneeze tomorrow on Monday Night Raw when Mr. McMahon shows up. <laughs> then, man, anything left, <laughs> anything left I, before we get out I of I think here? what you just said sums it all up. <laughs> Triple J. Uh, that's it. Good <laughs> luck on your hunt. All right, we're pulling up at the Marburger Mart now. I'm going to get my tables, ladders, and chairs wired. Bust ass job on the social media gimmicks as always. For Mustamar complaining on the internet. For the salt of social media man called Wired. Dr. Calsonis on the Unos and Doses. Vin Man on limited dates and time on this episode. Jumping Jacob J, keeping things in order. And Long Island Ice T searching for TLC. I'm Long Island Ice T saying I got to get the hell out of here and get my best suit because Mr. McMahon's on Monday Night Raw tomorrow. <laughs>